Okay, so I wanna address something before getting into this video, and that is this lighting setup. A lot of you guys have been asking about that in our previous videos, so we'll make sure to leave links to pretty much everything that we use in the description down below. It's all down there, you're welcome. Now, AMD's Ryzen 5000 series of desktop CPUs have surpassed everyone's expectations as to what it can deliver to the desktop platform. In fact, we did a complete performance analysis on the Ryzen 5 5600X, the Ryzen 7 5800X, and the Ryzen 9 5900X. If you missed out on that, you can check it out right over here. One of the things that was brought up in the comments from our previous review video uh, was the fact that nobody was able to actually buy one of these new CPUs. And the truth is, from all the retailers that we've been talking to, they seem to be getting a lot of them in stock uh, in the next a few weeks, so there's nothing to worry about that. It's not like the RTX you know, 30 series launch where pretty much finding one is literally impossible, but this seems to be taken care of. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that CPUs like the 5900X and the 5950X uh, were launched with limited availability uh, than the 5600X and the 5800X. With that being said, today I wanted to focus on this guy, the Ryzen 9 5950X. This processor deserves its own dedicated video because it resides in a class of its own. And if you want to learn more about the architecture in the Ryzen 5000 series lineup, uh, make sure to check out our other video. So, the 5950X. It's the fastest Zen 3 CPU that AMD has launched so far. And its primary focus is to deliver the best multi-core performance in pretty much every application that can take advantage of that feature. So, Let's find out how it stacks up against its predecessor, the Ryzen 9 3950X, and we'll also throw in some Intel CPUs just for fun. So let's dive in right after this. The new Pure Loop All in One coolers from Be Quiet have a doubly decoupled pump near the radiator for silent operation and flexibility for mounting, an elegant cooling block with pure white illumination, an accessible fill port on the radiator with liquid for future proofing, and Pure Wings 2 fans on the rad. Check it out below. All right, before I go over our test system and benchmarks, I do wanna quickly talk about the specs of the 5950X. It features 16 cores and 32 threads, a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz, which is 100 megahertz lower than the 3950X. However, the boost clocks is 200 megahertz higher, so 4.9 gigahertz, which is just crazy. AMD has also managed to deliver the 5950X within the same 105 watt TDP spec, just like the 3950X. So they haven't sacrificed on power efficiency, but, this thing is priced at $800, which is not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's a $50 premium over the 3950X when it was launched, and you can pick up that CPU for around $700 these days. Now look, if you're an average consumer, or let's just say an average gamer, you might not be looking at a CPU like this because it's probably way too powerful and definitely way too expensive for your respective needs. But when you start looking or talking to professionals, who spend hours compiling code, rendering projects, or just rely on a CPU uh, that needs to flex its muscles full time all day long, then spending $800 on something like the 5950X could be money well spent. Plus, there is the added bonus of gaming as well if that's something that you do casually on the side. As for the test system, nothing has really changed since the launch day Ryzen 5000 series review, other than the fact that we're adding the 3950X and the 5950X along with Intel's highest end workstation CPU, the Core i9-10980XE. Remember, that processor costs around $1,000 versus $800 for the 5950X. Cinebench right away shows the strengths of the Ryzen 9 5950X, and it's actually the first non-workstation CPU to pass the 10,000 mark in R20. That's just incredible. Single core numbers are amazing as well, but that's pretty much what we expected uh, for the course with Zen 3. However, the actual performance increases shown by Cinebench don't make their way into every real world application. For example, many video rendering tasks are now shared between the GPU and the CPU. So while you'll see a speed increase by moving to Zen 3 from Zen 2, it's actually quite minimal even with the 3950X versus 5950X situation. Moving on to animation rendering in Autodesk Maya, and that's where some of the benefits from Zen 3 start to show themselves in a bit more meaningful ways. But would I upgrade from a 3950X to a 5950X for pure rendering tasks? Probably not. Zen 3 does provide a performance increase in multi-thread apps like these. On the other hand, the 5950X is an amazing option for someone upgrading a rendering workstation or productivity machine that's a few years old. In that case, it offers a massive speed up and pretty affordable price uh, for that market. The same thing can be said about Handbrake, where it looks like throwing more cores at the problem 
doesn't give massively different results from the 5900X. But it's still amazing to see what the 5950X can offer versus the previous generation. Program compiling though, this, this is one area where the Ryzen 9 5950X really, really shines. Here, it just demolishes almost everything in its past. I said almost because the only exception in this is the 10980XC, which actually gets its first and only win here. Metashape shows some real improvements too, and I think this highlights where the strengths of Zen 3 are. Whenever a workload's purely multi-core driven like Maya or Blender, these new CPUs offer a good generational uplift over the previous generation. Switch over to something like this program that combines lightly threaded and full multi-core rendering in a single output, and the architecture revisions really start to shine. Reality capture is basically the same thing. Our scene output involves different scan devs and render outputs, which are combined to create a rendered image, and that allows the 5950X's new CCX layout to flex its muscles, while also working out multi-threaded loads. I know while a minute difference between the 5950X and 3950X might not seem like much, you have to remember a creator would be working on dozens or even hundreds of these outputs for a single project. So that single minute could add up to hours of time saved over the long run. All right, moving on to gaming. And before getting onto the results, I wanna mention again that the 5950X isn't meant as a gaming CPU. It's sort of a hybrid workstation processor that is meant to rip through creative workloads without sacrificing the ability to deliver high in-game frame rates. As you can see, that's exactly the case as we go through our AAA game charts. In some cases, the higher single core frequencies are really beneficial, but for the most part, the 5950X doesn't offer any tangible benefits over the other Ryzen 5000 series CPUs in most games. If I had to think about why this is the case, let me refer back to what we said in our launch day content. Basically, CPUs like the 5800X and 5600X have the benefit of having a single CCX. So all communications happen within a single eight core die. And that leads to super low latency, which games in particularly love. Basically, the 5900X and 5950X spread their cores over two CCXs, which means individual cores could need data from the cache of another core residing in the opposite CCX. If that happens, additional latency gets added since communication gets done through the Infinity Fabric rather than locally. It also looks like the move from 12 cores to the 5950X's 16 adds some more overhead too. I mean, sure, the higher clocks compensate, but not in every situation. On the other hand, when a title like Horizon Zero Dawn can leverage additional cores, there is a small but mostly unnoticeable benefit. Esports titles like Rainbow Six and some other mirror the other results, but in some situations, you'll see the 5950X does offer a bit higher 1% lows. It isn't noticeable in games, but it's there. Even after three consecutive runs, it showed up in our charts. The only real exception to all of this was Valorant, which saw ridiculous frame rates. It really looks like the developers are some of the few who are taking advantage of all the cores and clocks in current gen CPUs. Power consumption is another one of Zen 3's strengths, since AMD has been able to achieve what seemed like something impossible. They've given it a massive generational performance increase, higher sustained clock speeds, better lightly threaded performance, and literally the same power envelope, all without changing to a new manufacturing process or sacrificing in any other areas. It's pretty incredible, guys. So that pretty much wraps up this review, and all I have to say is that the Ryzen 9 5950X is one heck of a CPU for pretty much any multi-threaded productivity application. It's a beast, and even at $800, it can actually provide a really good value for someone who might be rocking a workstation uh, that's maybe two or three years old. On the other hand, if you're someone who's rocking a 3950X, the benefits of moving to this CPU would be minimal in most situations, even though that Zen 3 is simply a drop-in upgrade on existing X570 or B550 motherboards after a BIOS update. But with that being said, there are some professional programs out there which combine partial and full core loads that do make sense for an upgrade right now. As for gaming, well, let's just put it this way. Most people shouldn't, and I mean shouldn't buy the 5950X as a pure gaming CPU unless you have the money to burn on bragging rights. From a gaming perspective, you're actually much better off picking up one of the less expensive 5000 series CPUs like the 5600X or the 5800X and then save that extra money for perhaps a better GPU or maybe even more storage because games these days, they just eat a chunk of your storage. So that's definitely a good way of investing your hard-earned money. And Intel, 
it's just really hard to recommend anything at this point, unless if you need it for a very specific task. I mean, sure, the 5950X is $800, which is almost close to the $1,000 price point on the 10980XC, but there's just no competition between these two CPUs, guys, because AMD takes it nine out of 10. Now, if you don't fit into that category and want a multifunctional CPU that can render like no one's business during the day and game at high frame rates at night, the 5950X is where it's at. Now, there's one last point that I quickly wanna to touch base on. You see, you can actually save a lot of money and go for the Ryzen 9 5900X because if you look at the differences between those two CPUs, it's actually not a lot and it's almost like a $250 difference between the two uh, and you can save that maybe towards, like I said, a better storage solution or maybe a higher end GPU. So that's another way of looking at things because um, like I said, if you're purely like editing videos in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, you're much better off with something like the 5900X because the 5950X, it's just, it doesn't really give you that much in terms of performance. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. Spend responsibly, my friends, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.